This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Thursday, April the 25th, 2019. It's the feast of St. Mark the Evangelist. He was close to St. Peter and was probably Peter's official secretary or scribe. His gospel is certainly the shortest, the least detail-rich, and the earliest of the written texts that we have. Of course, we have to remember that each of the Gospels was written for a specific audience before they became broadly read and included in the Bible 400 years later. St. Matthew wrote for the Jews, St. Luke for the Greeks, St. John for the early Christians, and St. Mark, ascribed to St. Peter, wrote for the Romans. It's worth remembering that at this time, the common language of most of the Roman Empire, even the city of Rome, was Greek. Mark's style is very quick and very focused. He uses the word immediately a lot. He also tends to point out the failure of the apostles and other disciples to recognize Jesus for who he is. Mark is heavy on miracles, and he emphasizes details of those miracles which the Romans would identify with, using spittle to cure blindness and saying what might be perceived as magic spells like ephatha and talitha kum. Of course, Mark is also quick to correct that Jesus isn't with Beelzebub, but with God. All in all, Mark's gospel is short, but dense, and he serves as a kind of early bridge between the Jewish thinking about eternity and the more Greek thinking, which was prevalent in the Roman Empire of the day. St. Mark's Day is also the major rogation day. Rogation days are days of prayer and of fasting for a successful harvest and a good agricultural season. The name comes from the Latin word rogare, to ask. And the rogation days replace a pagan event called robigalia, in which sacrifices were made to the Roman god of agricultural disease. Now this was a common thing in the early Christian era. The Romans had the right idea, pray for a good harvest, pray for a mild winter, pray for a happy marriage, whatever. They made these prayers to false gods. The Christians roll up on the scene and say, hey, right prayer, wrong God. Some modern people seem to think that by acknowledging this, they're throwing shade on Christians. But in reality, all they're doing is showing that Christians at the time wanted to take the best intentions of the local people and the best parts of the local culture and improve them. Both Robigalia and the Rogation Days were marked with penance and processions. The idea was to take a day of fasting and to have a procession in which a group would walk through the city saying prayers and singing hymns. The Rogation processions traditionally were a time for the beating of the bounds in which the community or the church parish would walk around the physical borders of the territory singing the litany of saints and sprinkling holy water, asking the Lord to protect their land and their families. Today is also Red Hat Society Day. The RHS was founded in 1998 for ladies age 50 plus to provide opportunities for, quote, pleasant social interaction, both for reconnecting with old friends and making new ones. The Society was founded by Sue Ellen Cooper when she came across a poem while thinking about the right gift to give a friend. The poem was called Warning by Jenny Joseph, and the first line is, When I am an old woman, I shall wear purple with a red hat which doesn't go and doesn't suit me. The Red Hat Society was born soon after. Today, the age limit is gone, and more than 50,000 ladies in 30 countries doff un sombrero rojo. Finally, today is World Malaria Day. Believe it or not, malaria is the deadliest disease in human history, by a large margin. And the most dangerous animal that has ever lived is the humble mosquito. Today, we commemorate and pray for the people at risk and for the people who are working to help them. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.